Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. The manumission and emancipation of serfs and slaves. England and Europe, the 14th century. Manumission of European serfs and villains. The Tsar Alexander II of Russia, Emancipation of Russian Serfs, 1861. Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States, Emancipation of the American slaves, 1865. Abraham Lincoln proclaimed freedom for all, both black and white. Education to all classes, proclamation of emancipation. This implies that both black and white needed freedom. Manumission and emancipation of the serfs, villains, and slaves. Manumission or enfranchisement is the act of freeing slaves by their owners. Different approaches to manumission were developed, each specific to the time and place of a particular society. The motivations for manumission was complex and varied. Firstly, it may present itself as a sentimental and benevolent gesture. Manumission, the freeing of slaves by their owners. Legislation under the early Roman Empire put limits on the number of slaves that could be freed in wills, which suggests that it had been widely used. Freeing slaves could serve the pragmatic interest of the owner. The prospect of manumission worked as an incentive for slaves to be industrialists and compliant Roman slaves were paid a wage which they could save up to buy themselves freedom. Some of the professions and careers in modern time that are held in high esteem were held by slaves in ancient times. For example, some of the Greco-Roman slaves, just a few of the special slaves we offer in the Greco-Roman Empire, Marcus, a chef, 
specializing in fish dishes and use of garum, which is a sauce, something like ketchup today, Nestor, building skills, master of mosaics, Janaeus, tutor of military tactics, physical fitness, equine mastery or horsemanship, palace, astrologer, fortune teller, Corollis, tutor of philosophy and history, and singer, seamstress, and a scribe. Apelles, a tutor of languages. The Roman slave markets were very similar to the slave markets and auction blocks of the Americas. The selling and buying of human beings, men, women, and children, existed in all empires. Slaves were brought and sold at a market. A highly educated slave might cost as much as $120,000 at today's price. A trained farm worker slightly more than $10,000. A common laborer would cost even less. Desired attributes included beauty, strength, education, and special skills. The contract usually stipulated a no-return policy except for epilepsy. So who were the slaves? In the year 65 BC, the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem. In 70 AD, General Vespasian and his son Titus put an end to the Jewish state with great slaughter. During this period of the military governors of Palestine, many outrageous and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. During the period from Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated that over one million Jews fled into Africa, fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. The slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. And these were the Roman Carthaginian slaves. And they were Israelites. And this is a mosaic dated at 180 to 190 AD. And it can be found at the Louvre Museum in France today. In ancient Rome, under Roman law, a slave had no personhood and was protected under law mainly as his or her master's property. That sounds like chattel slavery. In ancient Rome, a slave who had been manumitted or freed was a libertus for a man, liberta for a woman, and became a citizen of Rome. The soft felt Peleus hat was a symbol of the freed slave and manumission. Slaves were not allowed to wear them, only free men and women. Among the Romans, the cap of felt was the emblem of liberty. When a slave obtained his freedom, he had his head shaved and wore instead of his hair an undyed Pelias. 
Lapilius hat. Lapilius was a brimless felt cap. The pilos, together with the patesos, were the most common types of hats in archaic and classical era, 8th to 4th century BC, Greece. The Pileus was the hat of a emancipated slave. In ancient Rome, the Roman Pileus resembled the Greek Pylos and was often made of felt. In ancient Rome, a slave was freed in a ceremony in which a praetor or a Roman judicial officer touched the slave with a rod called a vindicta and pronounced him to be free. The slave's head was shaved and a Pileus was placed upon it. Both the vindicta and the cap were considered symbols of libertas, the goddess representing liberty. This was a form of extra-legal manumission. Among the Romans, the cap of felt was the emblem of liberty. When a slave obtained his freedom, he had his head shaved and wore instead of his hair an undyed Peleus. In the period of the Techagri, the Pannonian cap was adopted as the main military cap of the Roman army until the 6th century AD because so many of the Roman officers were freemen. They were at once slaves, but now they were free men, Israelites. On the left is a coin of a Peleus cap between two daggers on the reverse of a denarius coin issued by Brutus to commemorate the assassination of Julius Caesar on the Ides of March. The Romans were sending a sign to say that the Romans were free men and not the slaves of Julius Caesar because the Peleus hat was a symbol of free men. The Tetrarchs were the four Roman rulers of the Roman Empire. A Pope-free statue on Venice Basilica de San Marco shows the Emperor Diocletian and his three imperial colleagues all wear the Peleus cap. The Roman Emperor Diocletian was born between the years 242 to 245 AD and died 311 or 312 AD was a Roman Emperor from 284 until his abdication in 305, he was born, Diocles, to a family of low status, former slaves. In the Roman province of Dalmatia, Diocles rose through the ranks of the military early in his career, eventually becoming a cavalry commander for the army of Emperor Carius. After the deaths of Carius and his son, Numerian, on a campaign in Persia, Diocles was proclaimed emperor by the troops, taking the name Diocletianus. Emperor Diocletian wearing the Peleus hat, the hat of the emancipated slave. Emperor Diocletian his parents were of low status that he is said by most writers to have been the son of a scribe but by some to have been a freed man of a senator called Anulinus. The enslaved 
Israelites became emancipated in the Roman Empire and wore the Peleus hat to show that they had become free men. The New Living Translation Bible He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. The book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 21. The Fijian cap. The Fijian cap or Liberty Cap is a soft canonical cap with the apex bent over. Although Fijian caps did not originally function as Liberty Caps, they came to signify freedom in the pursuit of liberty, first in the American Revolution and then in the French Revolution. The original cap of liberty was the Roman Peleus the felt cap of emancipated slaves of ancient Rome, which was an attribute of Libertaeus, the Roman goddess of liberty. In the 16th century, the Roman iconography of liberty was revived. The figure of Libertaeus is usually depicted with a Peleus, the Phygian hat of liberty, for the French and American revolutions. Liberty leading the people. Liberty leading the people is a painting by Eugene de la Croix commemorating the July Revolution of 1830, which toppled King Charles X. A woman of the people with a Fijian cap Personifying the concept of liberty leads a varied group of people forward over a barricade in the bodies of the fallen. Holding aloft the flag of the French Revolution, the tricolor, which again became France's national flag after these events. In one hand and brandishing a bayonet musket with the other. The figure of liberty is also viewed as a symbol of France and the French Revolution known as Marianne. The painting is sometimes wrongly thought to depict the French Revolution of 1789. Liberty leading the people is exhibited in the Louvre in Paris. Lady Liberty is wearing a Fijian cap or the cap of the emancipated slave. The Gallo-Romans, or Frenchmen, placing the Fijian cap on King Louis XVI head, asserting that he is no longer king and that they are his equal. He is just a citizen like themselves. The Gallo-Romans, villains and serfs, revolt against the Germanic Frank, the Israelite king, Louis XVI. The second key to this study is the phenomena of deliberate falsification of history as part of the enslavement of others. The Frank German Frank aristocrats falsified history so they could enslave their serfs and villains who were Romans by hiding the fact that the villains and the serfs were Romans. They told the serfs and the villains that they were Frenchmen, but in actuality, they were enslaved Romans. It is generally agreed even by the Franco-Latin nobility the aristocracy of France, 
that the civilization of the Roman Empire was Hellenic in its inception. But this same nobility claims that this Romano Hellenic civilization changed into a Western civilization in the 8th and 9th century in Western Europe. In other words, the Greco Roman Empire, the Western Roman Empire, ceased to exist. And the name change was a set of Western Roman Empire, Western civilization. It was no longer considered part of the Roman Empire history, but it was considered a new civilization called Western civilization and into a business civilization in the East. In the Eastern Roman Empire, the name was changed from Eastern Roman Empire to Byzantine Empire. So the Roman Empire was wiped away and you had two divisions. Once it was Western Roman Empire, Eastern Roman Empire. Now it was Western Civilization and Byzantine Empire. Historically, they wiped the Roman Empire off the map. And they falsified history by telling their serfs and villains they were not Romans. They were Franks. They were Byzantines. But they're not had they were not Romans. They had no clue that they were former Romans. And to continue reading. At about the same time, but what had really happened was that the Franco Latins or the aristocracy of Europe had reverted to a period of sheer barbarity under the leadership of the Carolinian Franks. So John S. Romanides, a writer, considers that what happened in Europe with Charlemagne enslaving the Romans was an act of barbarity, which up until recently has still been called the Dark Ages, and they call the period the Dark Ages because the Romans themselves were enslaved and they lived in darkness, unaware of their former glory, their form of history. He's upset. The John S. Romanides is upset about what actually happened. How else can one describe France? He's like, how else can you describe what happened in France? For example, in 1789, when 85% of her population, of France population, was still serfs and villains, guarded from escape from France by 40,000 castles. How can such a France be better described than part of the Dark Ages? It can, of course, be made to look like a civilized society only when history is controlled by the aristocracy and the middle class of 13%, which still keeps this so-called free 85% and abject slavery to history as written by themselves. The aristocracy rewrote history and held 85% of the population of France as serfs. John S. Romanides, 85% of France population was serfs and villains during the time of the French Revolution. 85% of the population of France were serfs and villains. There were Gallo-Roman or French Romans. 13% was the middle class in France. 2% was the aristocracy in France. The actual descendants of the Germanic Franks, conquerors of the Western Roman Empire, and they were Israelites, not Gallo-Romans, but Israelites.